Hello everyone, this is Manali Mishra from KP Classes and uh, we are basically again back with a few more solutions for the questions that we have gotten from our students. So these are questions based on uh, the memory, whatever memory they have, whatever they can recall of the questions. This is based on that. So I don't have the entire questions and also I have the uh, uh, all the options, certain questions, but as much as I could gather from, you know, whatever I could get, I have basically, you know, tried to sort out a few solutions for that. So we have a few questions and uh, as we keep on getting questions, we'll keep on sharing the solutions with you. So uh, the overall uh, feedback that we got from the students is that uh, the exam was kind of moderate. It was definitely something that they were not expecting. Uh, also, numerical questions were not a lot. A lot of theory was asked and a lot of theory from different different aspects were asked which they were not expecting apparently. So uh, this is what the feedback that we have gotten till now. But uh, based on whatever questions that uh, we could gather, I have come up with a few solutions, uh, solutions for a few questions. So if you keep on recalling anything more, you can comment uh, down you know, the exact questions. If there is any kind of uh, mistakes in any question, you can comment that down. OK, but we have uh, tried our best to basically, you know, gather things in whatever way and to answer that. So the first question was asked, there was a particular question asked uh, about biosphere reserves and uh, the exact question, if as much as I could under, uh, understand was it is an MSQ kind of a question. And basically a uh, few options were given and the students had to choose which is the biosphere reserves out of them. So uh, these are the two options that uh, I guess were the right answers already that I got. So biosphere reserves, if I talk about biosphere reserves, then yes, these two are definitely the right answers. And I do have a list uh, on your uh, screen, which kind of, you know, lists down all the biosphere reserves. Now biosphere reserve, there was a particular term used. MAB, that is Man and Biosphere Program. So this was a program which was launched under your UNESCO. And uh, under this, they started, uh, you know, identifying biosphere reserves. Now, overall, if I talk about, uh, you know, the total number of biosphere reserves, then in 134 countries, there are almost 738 biosphere reserves. And in India, there is 18 biosphere reserves, which is in India. This is the list. And on the list also, we can see Gulf of Manar is there and Sundarbans is there. Now, apart from the, these two, if you have done, this is definitely right. But apart from these options, if there are any more options which are from this list, then you had to take that also. But if they are not in this list, then probably you have to take the right answers. These two are the right answers for this. So biosphere reserves was asked. This was an MSQ. The next question, OK, a very interesting question that we had is which one of the following is correct? So uh, apparently this was also an MSQ. Uh, and they had given you four options. First is GD is cross density, ND is net density. So they had asked that GD more than ND. Option B is GD is less than, that is cross density is less than net density. C option is cross density is proportional to area. And uh, option D is cross density is inversely proportional to area. Now, uh, these were the questions or something like this. The question basically was there and you had to take which one was the fault, uh, which one was the right one. Now, I have already, uh, you know, we have already studied in the class also very briefly in, in detail uh, about gross and net, the difference between gross and net and also the difference between gross density and net density. And I told you gross means total, net means something is getting subtracted there. So obviously, uh, your gross density will never be more than your net density, okay? Your net density will be more, why? Because the denominator, if you just try to understand with the basic mathematics concept, for a same kind of uh, uh, density, let's say population density, let population of a particular place is 100, okay? So if the area of that place, the total area of that place is, let's say, let's say again, 100 meters square is the total area. Just this is an assumption. And let's say the net area, this is the GD and this is the ND. Let's say again, 100 by the net, let's say the net residential area is 80. So obvious value that you'll get for ND will be more. OK, GD will not be more. 
Understood? So GD gross density will not be more than your net density. That means net density will be more than your gross density. So obviously B will be one of the right answers. Then they are saying net density is directly proportional to area. That means as your area, this particular thing is increasing, your uh, net density is also increasing. But if you increase this value, your overall net density will reduce, right? So that is why if area increases, your net density will reduce, not increase. That means it is not directly proportional. It is inversely proportional. Let's say I increase this area 200. Now what my net density has become one. Understood? So your gross, uh, your net density is inversely proportional to your area. So the options that would be correct since it's an MSQ, there'll be two options that is correct for this. Your option B and your option Okay, I hope this one this one is clear and we have done this correctly. Okay, then we have a very interesting question from again from housing. So in this question, they are saying HIG, MIG and LIG, the share of their units are in ratio of 3 is to 2 is to 1. And their area of these active units are individual area, obviously, is 100, 60 and 30 respectively. Now they're asking you total area of LIG plus MIG is to total area of HIG will be in ratio is to this, the blank that you have to fill up. Now they have given us the ratio proportion, the share of the different different units and they have given us the area also. So now they have given us the share, but we don't know the total number of units. So we will assume the total U. So let total dwelling unit bx okay now if i have to calculate the number of hig first what is written here total area of lig plus mig and total area of hig i know area of only one unit i have to calculate the total unit in order to calculate the total area of you know the total area of all the units first i have to calculate the total number of units only then i can multiply by 100 and calculate the you know total area so HIG, if I have to calculate, we know that HIG share is what? 3. So 3 by 6 into X, that is what? Basically X by 2. This is your HIG unit. Then MIG unit similarly will be what? MIG is what? 2 by 6 into X, that will be X by 3. And similarly, your LIG unit will be what? The share is 1, 1 by 6 into X, that x6 these are the number of three different units now the area for area i just simply have to multiply this by 100 this by 60 and this by 30 that will give me the area now let's try to put it in this ratio format which is given in the question in which format they want us to answer so let me do it side so what they are saying is total area LIG plus MIG equals to total area of HIG. So LIG is what? 30X by 6 plus your MIG is what? 60X by 3 equals to HIG is what? 100X by 2. Okay, this is something that you're getting. When you solve this, you'll get something like 25X equals to 50X. X will get cancelled. 1 is 2, sorry, this is not equals to, this is, is 2, okay? 1 is 2, 2. So this 2 will be the answer here, your value will be 2. So 1 is to 2 is the ratio that you will get. Very simple, okay? No, uh, as such, no formula is being used. You have to assume total number of dwelling units. Since total number of dwelling units is not given, so we'll assume that. And at the end, x will get cancelled and you'll get the answer. Very simple question again. Okay, now this comes another question which says that in additive color system, the secondary colors are, you have four options. A is cyan, magenta, yellow. B is cyan, blue, yellow. C is purple, blue, green. And D is purple, orange, green. Now, first you have to understand what additive color system is. We have two types of color systems in our color theory application. We have additive color system model and we have subtract color system model. Additive color system model is basically what? This is something that is used in your televisions, is used, you know, phones and your cameras. That is where additive color system is used. So here, what happens is in additive color system, let me write it like this, additive color system. Additive color system 
you have the primary colors as rbg rbg is the primary color so additive color system what happens here is basically you start with black and then you keep on adding r b and g and then you finally get whatever color you want to basically you start with black and you finally form your color that is adding something and then you have something called your subtractive so in subtractive color system your prime colors con consists of c m y k that is magenta yellow and k is basically your key color that is your black color okay here what you do you start white sheet of paper or a white you can say a bright a light back uh, a white uh, you know base and on that you keep on adding color and the final color that you get is black so this uh, subtractive color system is basically a kind of a mod which is used printers in your uh, silk printing painting okay wherever you have a white background or a white base and you keep adding color so the other prime colors in additive and in subtractive now when we come to secondary color it is basically what secondary is what you mix the primary colors and what color do you get so red plus blue blue plus green green plus red what are the colors that you get so the right answer for this will be cyan magenta and yellow option a will be the right for this particular uh, question i hope you have gotten the right answer for this uh now next we come to a question in which it says a 5.65 mm dia cable is suspended from a crane length of the cable is 50 meters if a 200 kg weight is hanging on its end then what will be the elongation in the cable in mm so they are saying that there is a 5.65 mm dia cable so there is a cable there is a crane from which a cable is suspended that cable length is 50 meter that is original length and the diameter of the cable is 5.65 mm okay and then what we did on the end of the cable we have basically we have this cable and here we have hung a weight which is 200 kg weight now because of that hanging some kind of elongation will come this length is 50 meters and the dia of that cable is 5.65 mm now because of that hanging some kind of elongation will come so they want us to calculate the elongation in mm so i have always told you whenever something is asked first write the formula for that particular thing so we know one thing that is what elongation that is your delta l let's say l is your uh, length so elongation delta l is what strain into length okay strain is what stress by young's modulus now in this question they have also given us the young modulus they have said that assume your y is um 2 into 10 to the power 5 and they have also given us gravity uh, that is 10 okay that that is something they have given us 10 they have given us the gravity so these are the things that they have already given us in the question okay so young's modulus is given we can use that directly and in order to calculate strain also first we have to calculate your stress so the formula is for stress is what f by area force by area so first let's calculate stress then we'll go to and then elongation finally so first let's calculate for stress we need to first calculate the force so force is what force is mg m is what mass mass is how much 200 into g is what 10 so 2000 newton will be your force okay this will be the force now we have to calculate stress for that we need to first calculate the area so we know that the diameter of the cable is what 5.65 this is known dia is what 5.65 mm and that is why the radius will be how much the radius will be 2.825 now they have asked everything in mm so we will not do any conversions here okay in the end they want us to give the answer in mm okay so based on this when you calculate the area you know area is what pi r square so based on this when you calculate the area your stress becomes what 
divided by area that you calculate area will be your 25.07 you can calculate the area you'll get 25.07 so your stress is basically force by area that is 2000 divided by 25.07 and when you divide it you get something like 79.77 this is the value that you'll get okay for stress now that we know stress let's put the formula in strain so strain is what stress that is 79.77 by young's modulus that is why that is how much 2 into 10 to the power 5 this is the thing that will that you'll get and when you solve this particular uh, equation that you are getting you will get 0 0.000398 okay now that we know the strain and we also know the length which is given to us as 50 meters but be careful why because the answer is being asked in mm so we have to convert this 50 meters into mm so that is why your delta l that is your elongation will be what strain that is 0 0.000398 into 50,000 mm because we convert it into mm so when you multiply it, you'll get something like 19.94 mm. Okay, so basically you just needed to uh, uh, know the formula for elongation, stress and strain. You could solve this. And I hope you have done this also. So this will be the answer for this particular question. Okay, a very, very, uh, a question which was repeatedly being, uh, you know, said by everyone, niche. What is the concept of niche in ecosystem? See, the basic meaning of niche is what a comfortable area, not in terms of ecosystem or not ecological niche, but a basic niche meaning is what niche means uh, your comfortable space, you can say. So when we talk about ecological niche, that means we are talking niche for species, different kind of species. Now we know that different kind of species, they can survive in different kind of conditions okay there are different conditions which are required for survival of different species not all these species can live in the same conditions the species which are found in desert area they will not be found in your uh, you know forest area so niche is what niche in a very simple term if i have to explain are those biotic and abiotic components which are required for a species to survive okay that is what your ecological niche means now there's a term called habitat which you might get confused with that habitat that is what we call habitat right but habitat is what habitat is a geographical area where you find a particular species it only accounts for the abiotic components okay when we talk about a niche it is both the biotic and the abiotic it's not just about the geographical but it is what kind of you know uh conditions do we need what are the resources that are available what is the competition that is there for the survival of a particular kind of a species so niche in a very simple terms if i had to say this is basically the interrelation of the species with the biotic and the abiotic components now the options for this is not known but this is what a niche means so if you remember the options um commented down but now i hope you have understood what niche is so if you have you know attempted this question you would know if you have done it right or wrong okay okay now we have matching the population with the respective category so apparently there were four options here okay and these were the five options that were available here now you had small town two medium town two large city metropolitan two okay these were the four options now these were the various options that were given i have already arranged it and written I did not have the option. This is how I got it from a student. Maybe apparently that person has done it in this way, which is right. Okay. So if you have done it in this way, this is right. So small town two. Remember, we have small town one and two. So when we talk about one, small town one, the population ranges from 5,000 to 20,000. And small town two, it ranges from 20,000 to 50,000. Then medium town 2, again, medium town 1 is there, medium town 2 is there. Medium town 1 is what? 50,000 to 1 lakh. Whereas medium town 2 is lakh to 5 lakh. So these both are right here. It's already arranged in the right manner. Then we go to large city. So 5 lakh to 10 lakh is the large city. And large city does not have any, you know, divisions. Not, there's no large city 1 and 2. It's just large city. So 5 lakh to 10 lakh is your large city. And metropolitan, basically, 
if you have a population above 10 lakh those kind of cities are called metropolitan so metropolitan also has two kinds of division metropolitan 1 and 2 so above 10 lakh that is 10 to 50 lakh is your metropolitan 1 and 50 lakh to 1 crore is your metropolitan 2 so this is the right option for your metropolitan 2 now this was another option that was available for matching but there was no term like this i've just written the term more than one crore the cities which have more other urban areas which have more than one crore they are known as megapolis okay so this option was not given i just wrote it here for your understanding okay if you have done it in this way probably you have done the you have actually done the right option okay another question that was asked is what is the full form of arhc so arhc is affordable rental housing complexes now this was a scheme which, which was specifically launched during your covid uh, 19 because there was a lot of reverse migration happening during that time people did not have see uh, people could not afford rent for their houses so they had to go back so there was a lot of reverse migration People, uh, a lot of poor, you know, a lot of, uh, your, you can see EW section of the city, they live in slums just to save on their house rent. That is why the government came up with this scheme to provide housing at an affordable rent to people who are not able to afford a house in the cities. This was a scheme that was brought up during your COVID-19. And whatever vacant uh, government houses under certain government schemes, whatever vacant houses were there, those were being utilized for this particular scheme. So the full form of ARHC is Affordable Rental Housing Complex. Another question was asked regarding GSTALT principle. So they had given four options. Now, I don't know if it is an MSQ or a MCQ, but I, I assume this is an MCQ. Okay. So which of the following is based on GSTALT principle? You have grain and texture, closure, scale and proportion, flow. Now we know GSTALT has six principles principle of proximity principle of similarity principle of closure principle of figure and ground theory or not theory but figure and law of pregnance which we also call as law of proximity similarity closure figure and ground law of pregnance Okay, and finally, you have law of continuity. Now, with closure, there was one more option. I'm not aware of what that particular term is, but these are the four options. Now, urban green, urban texture is a completely different thing. That has nothing to do with G-Stalt. Now, if it is an MSQ, obviously, this will be the only answer. Closure, you have a law of closure. Rest other, there is no such thing called law of scale and proportion, law of flow. But I'm not sure if it is an MCQ or MSQ. Your closure will be the right answer. Okay. For this particular question, law of closure you have and another, I don't know what that term is, but your B will be the right answer. Okay. Now, scale and motion and flow, when we talk about C, scale and proportion are one, it's kind of one of the factors which comes under your law of similarity. That means similar scale of object, similar proportion of objects that can be taken in one way if it is an MSQ. If it is an MCQ, without a doubt, B will be the right answer. Okay, okay. Now, another very important question which was asked was obligatory functions of ULB, that is urban local body, and this is an MSQ. Four options were given. Stop cruelty towards animals, urban poverty alleviation, disaster mitigation, promote cultural and educational events. Now, there, I don't know if there are more options or these are the only four options, but it's an MSQ, so we will have more than one correct answer. Firstly, stop cruelty towards animals. Yes, this is one of the obligatory. So we know that means ULBs have two kinds of functions. Obligatory, obligatory means mandatory. That means the ULBs have to carry this out. And then discretionary. that means it depends on the amount of funds that is available. It depends on the discretion of the ULB, whether they want to carry out that function or not. So stop cruelty towards animal when we say, yes, it is an obligatory function of the ULB. Why? Because, you know, any kind of cruelty any, uh, towards animal functioning of your slaughterhouses, tanneries, 
cremation ground burial grounds everything comes under obligatory function of the ulb so ulb is responsible to take care of all these things so this is one of the obligatory functions a is the right answer urban poverty elevation is not an obligatory function it is a discretionary functions because urban poverty poverty elevation is based on your lot of schemes which are run by the central government ulb is only responsible for implementation they are not or they do not have any say in this kind of a situation so this is not your answer this is not an obligatory function now i'll come to d first promote cultural and educational events promotional of cultural and educational events is also a discretionary uh, function not an obligatory function why because the education aspect comes under the ministry of education department it's not specifically under your ulb ulb is responsible for the management but it is a discretionary aspect it is or discretionary function it is not an obligatory function now disaster management as such specifically has not been given as an obligatory function but if there is any kind of epidemic break out in the city then ulb is definitely responsible for the manage regulation or you can say for for you know for controlling that kind of a situation so since in msq your c will also be the right answer so apparently c and a and c these two should be the right answer b and d is not the right answer now if there are more options to this that is a different thing but based on what we have in front of us these two are the right answers okay so uh, these were all that we could get um, that i could basically get there were a few more questions but they were not clear as to what the question meant or there was not clear uh, options also for that because certain questions you need to have options you cannot just have the question so if you are you know if you are able to recall any questions uh, from your yesterday's examination uh, uh, gate examination then please share it in the comments below we will try to provide solution for for that also as soon as possible i hope this was uh, helpful to you uh, thank you very much